Whitewood. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, do it now and don't miss a thing. We have a super fun project coming up today and a special guest. Isabel just started a brand new business and is setting up a home office. So she doesn't have a ton of money to spend and bring this together. So this we found in a thrift store. This was Facebook Marketplace. There are two different finishes, and we've got to rearrange this a little bit to make it work for how she's going to work. We need to make this feel a little bit more cohesive, and we're going to make that happen today. Let's get started. As you guys know, we are the real solid raw wood furniture manufacturers, and it pains us to not work with real solid wood. But again, we're working with what we have today. These pieces are laminate over particle board. And I point that out because if you are ever going to do a project with, with laminate over particle board, you need to be careful when you're sanding that you don't go too deep. If you go too deep, you're gonna get beyond that laminate and get down to that MDF particle board. And that's no fun. So after a light sanding with just a 220 grit sandpaper, we're going to clean everything up with a with 100% acetone. This will remove anything, dirt, grease, whatever, from the furniture and give us a clean surface to work with. For the first coat of paint, we're just going to go ahead and apply that nice and thick. We're not using any kind of special brushes. We're using my absolute favorite, General Finishes Alabaster Milk Paint. It's not a bright, bright white, but it's not an antique white either. It's a nice in-between. Now, a little side note, we did run out about three quarters of the way through the project. So I got in touch with my good friend at General Finishes and he gave me a little tip if I had any Snow White, and if I had any Antique White from the General Finishes line, I could mix those 50-50 and voila, have Alabaster. So that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so while that first one, that first desk is drying, we're gonna move on to desk number two. Now, when we moved on to our second coat, we didn't want to have a lot of brush strokes. So we kept a water bottle close by. Now you can either wet your brush or your foam brush or the actual piece of furniture with water to get that dampness in there and make it a lot easier to smooth out that paint and not have those brush marks. And again, you don't have to necessarily do that for the first coat, but for the second coat, I highly, highly recommend it. Now that we've painted desk number two, desk number one is dry and ready for our light sanding. We don't want to remove any color here. That is not the point. But you are going to notice when you wipe your hand across the surface after that first or even second coat, you are gonna notice a little bit of grit to that. It's not gonna be super smooth. A smooth piece of furniture not only looks professional, but it feels professional. So make sure that you smooth between every layer of painting. Smooth that out with a 220 sandpaper, nice and softly, and then wipe that off with your tack cloth. So, surface is prepared for your next coat. Now, if you're in the process of making over your home office or dreaming up a home office, we have so many great options. Solid wood that will last forever and ever. From smaller four drawer desk to student desk to even executive desk or a corner desk. We have bookshelves, we have rolling cabinets, pretty much anything you could possibly want. Now, our favorite peg, if you're not looking for something that's huge, that's gonna be a monster in the room, but give you enough space to work off of, 
This OF-41 writing table is a great option. It's 48 inches, it has enough space for your laptop, your phone, a small lamp, without again being that big monster in a room. Okay, so when you're doing a top coat, though it's not a transforming piece of the project, because it's not like one thing shifting from another, it's a very, very important step. Um, the thing to remember is you can't really see it on the piece, so you need to make sure you don't get runs. If you do, you can go back and sand them, but it does add another step. So just pay close attention when you're doing the top coat to make sure that you're not getting runs. Okay! So here we are all wrapped up and this turned out adorable and it was a lot of fun. It's so fun to do a project with someone else. This whole thing was about nine hours so it was essentially a one day job. So with a little bit of grit, a little bit of time, and a little bit of money, we saved this home office. Thank you for joining us. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do it now. We'll see you next time.